What I find most often is that the neurotypical tone of voice changes even though she is trying to remain calm when approaching her spouse on the autism spectrum. A major source of sensory overload for a person with ASD is voice, especially tone of voice. The individual often analyzes voice tone first and then decodes the words used by the speaker later. Voice inflection by the speaker may convey a negative attitude, for example, sarcasm, irritation, criticism, and so on. A negative tone can be offensive to an autistic spouse, particularly if he's not sure why the speaker is using a particular inflection. For example, is she upset with me? Did I do something wrong? Why does she sound mad? While the ability toward extreme focus can be a strong point for a person on the autism spectrum, it's a problem when he can't shift away from thinking about things that are not of his choosing. In this case, downloading voice inflection as threatening. When the two of you are arguing, the two of you are going at it, and it almost looks like it's an equal battle, who's winning and who's losing? He's winning because as he's over there displaying his anger, that he is in he is fully engaged in anxiety reduction. That was the whole reason he got wound up to begin with. He got anxious, game on, he's over there running his mouth. He is actually in the process of alleviating his anxiety. He's discharging this negative pent up anxiety. She's over there getting more anxious. So when you are arguing with him and the two of you are going at it, he is discharging negative energy while you're building negative energy. Mm -hmm. You lose. And then you're the one to not forget this the next day, the next week, the next month. You remember shit from five years ago. He can't even remember something from yesterday. He will blow up, have his meltdown five minutes later. He's fine. You're not. If he blew up in front of you and the kids, the whole family's traumatized for a week, he's perfectly fine. You lose. suspect your partner has Asperger's or a high-functioning autism, what should you do? Approaching your partner with the idea that he or she may have an autism spectrum disorder can result in two completely different responses. Either your partner is concerned and interested in pursuing an answer to some obvious issues, or he is in complete denial. Your partner may even decide that the problem stems from you. In all honesty, most people on the autism spectrum are well aware that they don't process things like other individuals. Relationships of any variety have been difficult since childhood. Sensory issues have plagued them, like noises others don't hear and lights that others can ignore. The way they carry themselves seems less than graceful to fairly clumsy. Their obsessions overtake any attempt at normal social conversation. Yes, they know they are quirky, but have no concept of the reasons behind these differences. Let's assume that your partner knows that something is different about the way he interprets life. In this case, he or she may be searching for the reason and welcome your involvement. You can find resources on the internet that will help you understand your partner better and decide what action you both need to take, if any. On the internet, you can find articles that describe ASD in terms that your partner can relate to and also several mini evaluations that can help your partner decide if he or she wants to pursue a diagnosis. Now let's assume that your partner denies the possibility of being on the spectrum. As his significant other, you have to respect his decision to keep things the way they are. But this doesn't mean that you have to join him in denial. If you're married to a suspected adult with ASD, you can use a little help yourself to cope with the eccentric behavior. 
Contact your local chapter of any Autism or Asperger's Support Association. They offer assistance in all areas, therapy, steps to a diagnosis, family support, spouse support. Once you find the resources and support you need for yourself, you'll be able to pass your knowledge on to your partner. How you relay this knowledge, either directly or indirectly, depends on his or her response to the subject of Asperger's. As a woman with Asperger's who has been happily married for almost 30 years to a man with Asperger's and the mother of a daughter and four sons who are all on the spectrum and the grandmother of little spectrumites and as a fully human being with a complete range of emotions I would like to say that it is the mismatch between different neurologies that causes most of the problems. Oh, and I'm the daughter and granddaughter of spectrumites too. I have dropped my non-Asperger's friends over the years because I was unable to meet their expectations that I should change to be more like them. They never tried to understand me, yet expected me to understand them. I have great Spectrum friends, and we have fortnightly family get-togethers that are huge fun. Socializing with other Spectrumites is easy. We understand each other's body language, eye contact is not a problem nor is bluntness and honesty in conversation. We make allowances for each other's sensory difficulties and can tell if the other is uncomfortable and why. Hey guys, this is Mark Hutton with AdultAspergersChat.com and today I wanted to address this business of uh, when he, in this case he, is going to be the spouse with autism spectrum disorder, when he drifts away. And what I mean by that is a lot of times she, the NT wife, will email me or uh, post a comment in some of my Facebook pages and she will say, well, you know, we were working on things, making a deliberate effort to do so and things went well for, you know, a couple weeks and then uh, he stopped doing it. Uh, it being, uh, you know, there was actually some conversation, give and take conversation, some emotional reciprocity. He was actually showing some affection and some empathy and providing some, uh, you know, moral support and so forth. Making a good faith effort. He really tried. He wants to make her happy and he was doing well for a while. And then he starts drifting away. And what I mean by that is, um, some of his connectedness starts to wane and then she, the NT wife, views that as, oh, we're right back to square one again. This was just a temporary thing. It was just a phase. It wasn't genuine and we're right back to this business of me feeling like I'm not important anymore. But you know what? Because of the mind blindness and the alexithymia business, and if you have any questions about that, I've got a ton of videos on those two things. He doesn't know he's drifting away. He's not purposely having the thought, oh, this emotional reciprocity is killing me. I've got to go back to my special interest because she's annoying and I just don't want to spend that much time with her. He doesn't have those kinds of thoughts. He doesn't know that the connection is starting to uh, uh, deteriorate. He's out of touch with his emotions. He's out of touch with your emotions. He's not reading your body language, your, your uh, facial cues. He's not picking up on your comments if you're suggesting that uh, he's slipping. He's going to have to take a direct cue from you, the NT wife, that we're starting to revert back to our old poor relatedness skills. And so you could come up with a phrase or a keyword. Uh, like just, you could just say something tactfully like, Honey, I think we're slipping. And you can let him know ahead of time what that means. What that means is we were doing well for a while. We were actually having some give and take in conversation. You're actually showing me some empathy, some affection. I could tell that you were trying. And now it seems as though you have stopped trying. That's his cue when you, when you say we're slipping. He knows what that means. And, and he, in most cases, I have found that he will go, oh, Okay, well, thanks for telling me because I didn't know. 
I wasn't purposely trying to re-disconnect. I thought we were still connected. So if you find that he is doing well for a time and you actually feel like you're getting somewhere and making some progress, but then it starts to revert back, you're going to have to let him know. He's not doing it intentionally. He doesn't know uh, the subtleties of uh, your feelings. He can't read your feelings. He can't read your mind. You're going to have to let him know in very concrete terms, hey, we're slipping. We were doing well. I want to go back to how we were going and getting along two weeks ago. Remember that? Two weeks ago when things were going pretty good? I'm going to go back to that again. And he will, in most cases, go, okay, yeah, I, thanks for telling me. Okay? So the moral to this story is when you're doing well for a time and things start to slip, let him know. We're slipping. Can we go back to, you know, we were doing pretty good a couple weeks ago. Can we go back to that? That would be a big help to him. Thanks, guys. Okay, and this next question is, my husband has many, if not most, of the traits of Asperger's syndrome, but he refuses to talk about it or go for a diagnosis. Instead, he says, I'm just blaming him for our marriage problems. I'm about to the end of my rope. Any suggestions? Well, um... If your Asperger's husband's symptoms are threatening your marriage and he chooses to protect those symptoms rather than manage those symptoms, then his priorities may not be conducive to a long-term relationship, quite honestly. And I know that's hard to hear. And notice I do say manage the symptoms rather than trying to fix them or control them. It's about managing symptoms, which is very, very possible. So... If his priorities remain the same, you, in this case being the neurotypical wife, need to decide whether or not this is the right relationship for you. Even if he does decide to get a diagnosis and does accept that as a fact, you still need a strategy to resolve disagreements. I have received probably hundreds of emails from neurotypical wives who say that their husbands are simply in denial. But the bottom line is this. Your husband has to make a choice about what he values most. His marriage or refusing to seek a diagnosis. There's the million dollar question right there. What does he value most? His marriage or refusing to seek a diagnosis? If he values his relationship with you more than staying in refusal mode, then he'll go and see if he has the disorder. If he values staying in refusal mode more than his marriage, then quite honestly, you'll need to do some serious soul searching to decide whether you're going to stay in this relationship or not. But on a more positive note, there's a certain way that you can go about this that may make him a little more inclined to seek a diagnosis. If your husband has Asperger's but he doesn't know it, it's going to affect him anyway. And if he does know, he can minimize the negative impact while at the same time leverage the positive. And there's many more positives associated with the disorder than negatives. So without the knowledge that he has Asperger's, he may fill in, fill in that void with other more damaging explanations of his behavior. For example, he might say, I'm a failure, I'm weird, I'm a disappointment, I'm not living up to my potential, I'm no good at this marriage thing, uh, I'm a failure, and so on. So he's probably filled in uh, the blank him not knowing whether or not he has the disorder, with some very negative self-talk. So, as you try to talk with your husband about this, you'll want to be sure to discuss his strengths rather than focusing on the weaknesses or the challenges or the deficits that you have witnessed. And all adults with Asperger's have significant areas of strength. In fact, I'll go one better than that. They have more strengths than deficits. And that's what you need to focus on as you're trying to get him hooked into the idea of going and seeking a diagnosis. So if you'll include a lot of positive things you see in him that may also be related to Asperger's, he's not going to feel attacked 
by you or blamed by you. And this may make him a, a bit more open to the possibility of facing his fears by going for a diagnosis. And that's what you're running into here with him uh, being in denial is he's, a, he's afraid of what he may find out. Hey guys, this is Mark Hutton with adultaspergerschat.com and I wanted to respond to an email that I got from a, in this case it was a neurotypical wife who is married to a husband with Asperger syndrome and her question is in reference to a video that I put up a few days ago and I'll have the link to that below this video which describes how people with Asperger syndrome tend to prefer spending time with their special interest or their work more so than relationships. She's wanting to know what, what do you do in a case where you're wanting to have a deeper connection with, you know, in this case, an Asperger's husband who does seem to be preoccupied with his, in this case, uh, computer gaming. And she's kind of feeling isolated and unloved. So the question is, what do you do in a case like this? Keep in mind that people with Asperger's syndrome, they have less of a need for social connection. They have a small relationship gas tank, so to speak. We'll use an example of uh, Thanksgiving Day, where you, being the neurotypical wife, you could probably go to your family on Thanksgiving Day and spend three to five hours chatting, laughing, sharing stories, and so on. And you drag your Asperger's husband along with you. After about 30 minutes, he's burnt out. And he may hibernate over in the corner somewhere and play on his cell phone. And it's not like he's purposely trying to be antisocial. It's just that his relationship tank is full. And now he needs a time out, so to speak, in order to uh, de-stress. Think of it like this. Um, you know, the thermostat determines the temperature in the house. Your apostat determines level of hunger. And I'm going to make up a term here. We'll just call it the relatio stat. So you will need to dial down your relatio stat somewhat. So in dialing down your relatio stat, what you're doing is you're trying to more closely match his level of relationship emotional needs. And that would include sharing feelings, validating one another's feelings, sharing experiences, talking about one another's day, different forms of affection, and so on. He's going to have that need met more quickly than you. So rather than taking it personally and thinking, well, he doesn't want to talk to me or he's being insensitive or uncaring, what's going on there is that his tank is full and yours is not. So in this case, it's highly recommended that you get your, uh, the rest of your relationship needs met elsewhere with close family and friends. You need to top off your tank because his tank is full quickly and yours is not. But you need and you deserve to top off your tank. But you may have to do that with close friends and, and family members. You may find that you'll have to go to some parties by yourself or some social gatherings by yourself to get your social needs met. Another thing to consider is joining him in his special interest. If your goal is to spend more time with him and his goal is to spend as much time as possible with his special interest, in some cases it's possible for the uh, neurotypical wife to actually join the husband with Asperger's in his special activity. In this way, it's a win-win because he's continuing to do what he values with his time, and then you're also doing what you value with your time. But I understand it's a tough row to hoe any way you look at it because if your social-emotional needs are high and his are low, it is kind of a chronic mismatch, and it can create problems if you take that personally. But as I stated earlier, in the vast majority of cases, the Asperger's husband, who seems self-absorbed and disconnected from family, is not doing so intentionally. So to help you uh, make more sense of this, I want you to click on the link below and watch this other video that will help you understand why uh, people with Asperger's syndrome tend to prefer spending as much time as possible with their special interest, more so than with their significant other.